here outside Gigantia on the island of Gozo, on the Maltese Islands in the Mediterranean. Let's go and take a closer look. There's a few minor discoveries just on the way in. You can kind of see those. Just a few pottery shards and little pieces of statues. But in here, there's some very impressive finds we're going to take a closer look at. Straight away, we can see here. This looks like one of the goddess figurines that was found in this area in Gigantica. Was this a representation of the goddess Sansuna, who was supposed to be a giant goddess who actually built the temple site? So after the 1920s, Gigantia was cleaned of all the soil and the debris, and there were many drawings done. And there's just some examples here. You can just see the beautiful kind of style that was used in putting these together. Here's just some in these interesting drawers and you can just see this is an unknown artist sometime in the 1800s. There's more here. Let's take a look at this. Again, this is like an aerial view of what the Giant's Tower or Gigantia. And this is a view of the second left-hand apse of the South Temple. Again, I'm not sure who did that. It's an unknown artist. So thank you, unknown artist, for providing these wonderful pictures for us to view today. This is one of the original stones from the South Temple at Gagentia. See, it looks like some kind of phallic symbolism. And this is the area where it came from. The conical stone would have come just from there. You can see where it's pointing on the map here. So why that's out in here, I don't know. But to me, that almost, if it was this shape originally, it really does look like a phallic object, like a fertility symbol. These heads, these limestone heads, were found in the same area as the fertility-looking monolith. You can see the features on the face. This one looks very much like those upright figurines, like the ones from Corsica. Interesting hairstyle, it almost looks Egyptian. But look at this one, uh, that's quite good detail on it considering it's limestone. So these are the faces of the ancient megalith builders. So here's like a bull's horn, which is found at the entrance to Gigantia. You can actually see this was actually discovered right inside the entrance here of the South Temple, the larger temple of the two. So is that some kind of representation of like a, a bull cult? Here's some red ochre that was again discovered in this area and they were using these kind of dyes for various different purposes, for burial purposes. And we do find this kind of ochre used even on the east coast of North America going back to about 6000 BC, the similar time frame to what we have here at Gargantua. This was found in that part of the Southern Temple. And they were using it actually on the walls to decorate the walls, similar to what we find probably in Knossos in Greece, or Crete rather. So these are some stone spheres that they potentially, they think, were used to roll the large monoliths on to move them into place. They could have had other purposes similar to what we find in Costa Rica. These look a bit rougher. They look like they've been worn down. And this is uh, the museum's representation of how they move the stones with these particular spheres. So we just come out of the museum. We're just heading into the Gigantia proper now. We're going to go and have a look at some of these huge megalithic blocks in the North and the South Temple. Uh, I came here in 2007 with uh, the Antiquarian Society as part of the Metageum Conference. Um, and we had a good look around then. Sean Kerwin was here, Stuart Mason, many other antiquarians. And so we're going to, it's really good to get back here and have a proper look. It's just at the entrance here to the 
South Temple, you can see these spheres that they say were used to roll the stones into place. So it's fascinating that they're still here, and you can see the bedrock where they've, or, or these were large blocks that are actually part of the floor of the entrance to the temple. You can see it goes over both sides of the, of the entrance. Even some of the um, early excavators here and commentators on Gigantia, they were saying that the outer walls uh, were discovered, they were eight meters high, but there's belief now that the outer walls, especially the entrance walls, which is similar to what we find um, in the Sphinx Temple or the, or the Valley Temple on the Giza Plateau, where it was actually 16 meters high. That is what some of the uh, archeologists were saying, that they think it was much taller than it is now. It's been destroyed, it's fallen down. So actually, this could have been a remarkably magnificent temple. There's not much left of it here, but thank God it's still here. Um, and the legend states that it was built by a goddess giant woman called Sansuna, and that she actually um, made love to a normal human, uh, gave birth to a son. She would carry her son around on her back and build the temple at the same time. And it's said that she survived and grew so big because of a diet of broad beans and honey, which is a fascinating myth. And this is what's been going around. This is where the, the name of this place came from. But, so it does, it does really look like it was built by giants, whether you believe in the legends or not. There's evidence now all over the world that giants did indeed exist, so perhaps that's how this site was built originally. And you can see some of the uh, holes in the rock just at the entrance here. And you can see, you know, you can see them down there on the floor as well. Now, this is some, obviously this is some kind of gateway entrance. Here's just the classic stonework, sort of rough hewn limestone that forms most of the temple. And here you can see, they put glass down here so you can actually see various things. So that's the entrance and then we go around into the, one of the first apses. You can see it almost looks like a shrine. Is that some kind of goddess shrine? This is the area where certain artifacts were found. Again, just on these stones here, you can actually see holes carved right through them, which is not that difficult with limestone, but why they there is a whole different question. And you can see the weathering here is quite incredible. It's amazing they've lasted this long. So imagine these walls, especially these outer walls here being 16 meters high. It's incredible. How on earth did they do it? I wonder exactly how this looked. Probably slightly different to it does now. Fortunately, they have all the scaffolding here, but I guess that's in place just to keep it in, keep it upright. So you can see the rough hewn stones on the outside. There's like two walls up there, like a, the smaller stones on the outside, slightly larger in the middle, and then we have this interior temple space. What a beautiful sight. I, excuse me while I waffle and talk. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just going to make, make notes in my mind. So you have this, again, we have this sort of almost like polygonal flooring here. And then we have these layers here. And you can see the small dots on these stones. If you could zoom in a bit. I wonder why they're there. I mean, we do find this kind of thing in Tarxian and other temples with the spirals as well. But why are these small dots here? Is that just an aesthetic? purpose or was there some other meaning to that we're not aware of yet. Then we have the back wall of the temple. My god, imagine that being 16 meters high originally. That's incredible. Some of the stones at the top are bigger than the ones at the bottom. Then we have this niche here. I'm not sure exactly what that was for. It looks like it's kind of got water erosion but I'm not clear. I'm not too sure about that right now. Obviously the modern thing just to hold it in place. Again, we have, so we have these neat and tidy rocks, which are probably precision carved with the rough hewn stones right next to them. Just looking southeast 
through the temple here. And actually on the winter solstice sunrise would rise on the edge of that hill at the top there. So this is aligned and built according to the winter solstice sunrise around 3200 BC. Now we get this, we get the, we get the similar winter solstice sunrise at Newgrange, which is a very similar template in, in some ways, um, with the huge blocks and we have the certain, uh, certain carvings here. We do find even here, we do find in Malta and Gozo, the triple and double spiral carvings, which you find at Newgrange, again, which are the line to the winter solstice sunrise. So it's fascinating that these are two slightly different angles, 125 degrees and 135 degrees are the temples. And so it could depend on the hill. They could have been measuring it over a period of time. In some cases of some temples around the world, we actually find the sunrise is deliberately to hit the side of it. So they're slightly off center for a reason. So there's different theories on that, but just thought I'd mention that here. So we're just walking down where the sun would rise and it would slowly rise up over there, over that hill. And it would light up, not this part, but right at the back of the temple over there. So this is what we just looked at in the museum and it has this uh, repeated bird motif on here, which I'm gonna check, but I think there are other examples of a very similar motif around the world at other sites. You can see one of the original drawings here. And this, so this is the North Temple we're just walking into now. So this just entrance um, information board, it just says, information saying that they had a trilithon and this is like some graffiti that was drawn to sort of resemble what it looked like. So there were stones going across the top of the entrance stones here. So it wasn't just uprights, there were actually stones going across the top, which is what we do find at other sites in Malta. This is where the trilithon would have gone across. So either in these parts here or probably up here more likely. It's now been destroyed or lost. You see here where they would have been placed. You can see the curved area up there. That's very interesting. Another curved area up there, down here. And again, we have the holes going through. You can just see the huge walls that make up with a strange yellow stone at the bottom there. It seems out of place. It's like a more orangey yellow type of limestone or sandstone. So these entrance stones here actually much smaller. Uh, sorry, I'm just talking to myself. Oh, okay. No, excuse me, I'm not talking oh, to you. <laughs> it's a camera, yeah. I thought you were looking at me funny. Yeah, okay. So these entrance stones here in the North Temple at Gigantia are actually made of a softer type of limestone um, compared to the rest of it. They're slightly more yellow, uh, whereas the main limestone, the harder limestone is white, which is what we find mostly on the island here. So it does suggest that they had different qualities and they may have had energetic purposes behind them. There could have been different uh, mineral content in them. They could have some quartz in it even. Um, but certainly um, it's very interesting why they chose these two different stones. Is there a meaning behind that? Is there something that's yet to be discovered? I, I believe it probably is some energetic purpose. So these orange yellow stones are the what I think is pronounced globigerina stones. These are a different type of more yellow e limestone, which is softer, it's easier to carve. But I think they could have been put here for a reason. I think there may be um, some energetic purpose with the different types of stone linked together. It has some kind of orgone or naturally electromagnetic charge associated with it. And here you can just see some of the more intricate stonework here, which is what we find in many of the later famous temples in Malta, almost like a dolmen. But these have been beautifully cut and carved, very ruined and weathered now. And even up here, this is just incredible. This is like the outer wall here, and it's just got immense blocks that originally were 16 meters tall, according to Colin Renfrew. So, Absolutely fascinating and beautiful place. <laughs> so here behind me is some of the yellowy, softer limestone that we find here at the North Temple. Um, you can see the difference in colour and I believe um, there's something going on with this because this was used at different temples in the later period throughout Malta, Tarxian and other places 
and um, and I think it has some meaning. I'm not sure what that meaning is just yet. It could be an energetic purpose. It could be something else.